Hello everybody, welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. All right, this is part five of a six part series on Chilean Carmenere. Like all the wines in this series, this is a free sample and I have free reign to review it however I wish. Way back in episode 99 of the, of the current era, the WWTV era, uh, I did a detailed segment on Chilean wine. Nothing has really changed from that, so if you want to know more, then hit the link in the description and watch the first seven minutes or so of that episode. That episode's links also include a ton of resources to check out. Today's wine comes from Terra Noble. In 2022, I reviewed one of their Cabernet Sauvignons for my six-part series of Chilean cabs. Check out that episode if you want to know more about the winery and some other knowledge nuggets, but the reality is there isn't much to know history-wise. Uh, the winery is in the Mali Valley. Okay, this is their CA line. They consider this their flagship wine. They make this one and one called CA1. The difference is that uh, this is coming from the uh, Lolal Dio in the Costa region, and the CA1 is coming from the Los Lingues uh, Dio in the Andes region. Both are in the Valle de Colchagua and separated by about 70 kilometers or 44 miles. As far as where the vineyard is, I couldn't find it. There wasn't enough information to pinpoint it, and really that's about it. All right, well, let's get the stats for this wine. The 2020 Terra Noble Carmenere Costa CA2 suggested retail price $36. The Lalal Do uh, Carmenere Harvest is manual, selection manual, yield six to seven tons per hectare. That works out to 2.43 to 2.83 tons per acre for you uh, yield nerds. Uh, soil, clay and loam. Elevation, 100 meters or 300 feet. Uh, certified sustainable chili, certified vegan. Cold maceration for 20 days total in open top wooden tanks. Uh, aging, 16 months. That's uh, 58% untoasted French foudres. 42% new and used 300 liter French oak barrels. Bottle aging nine months, aging potential six to eight years. Production, 1,250 cases or 11,250 bottles. ABV, 14.3, TA, 5.02 grams per liter, pH, 3.66, and the RS is 2.73 grams per liter. All right, let's get into the wine. Yeah, you know, sometimes it just happens where wineries don't do a lot of history stuff on their website, or they put a lot of stuff on there, but it doesn't necessarily tell me anything. It's more about marketing, and that's fine. I mean, at the end of the day, they got to sell wine. You can make the best wine in the world, but if you can't sell it, you're, you've got a lot of wine to drink. I heard a little click that might be the end of the gas in the Corvin. Nope, yeah, a little bit more. But, and while I'm usually really good at finding vineyards, um, I do rely on the website to kind of give me some, some hints if it's not explicitly shown on a map. Um, but it can be kind of difficult. Though I have found some vineyards that you would think it would be impossible to find, but because they give me a they give me a close enough like where it is, and then they get like a, a really good couple pictures that can show the terrain, especially if there's mountains in the background. Then I can get on Google Earth ground level and I can I can kind of match the puzzle. Like the, everything looked exactly the same. And I'm pretty amazed when I will when I'm able to do that. For this wine. No dice. I, I spent a long time trying to find it. And I'm sure I was in the right area, but I don't know exactly where. All right. Uh, color, this is fairly opaque. I um, mean, it was 20 days cold maceration, so it's definitely getting lots of extraction. Um, you know, deep ruby color. It's all the way throughout. Okay. 
so there's darker fruit, not black fruit per se, but, you know, kind of darker red fruit and that cranberry raspberry, but not bright. Um, also got like some tobacco going on. And I feel like I've got some green, some fern, maybe a touch of bell pepper going on here. Earthiness. I feel like I can smell the alcohol too. I like it's kind of burning the nostrils. So 14.3, if I remember correctly. 14.5 on here, 14.5. What did I have on the text sheet? Did I say 14.3? 14.3. It's 14.5, by the way. Hopefully I'll remember to fix that, but the bottle says 14.5. Um, sometimes text sheets are not right. Um, that's just human error. <clears throat> uh, I mean, maybe their notes said 14.3. Maybe it truly is 14.3, but the bottle says 14.5. So real briefly for the, for the for the United States, for the laws, labeling laws, the TTB, the, the organization that, that governs all that, if a wine is 14% or higher, there's a 1% leeway. So from what the label says, so the label says 14.5, it may truly be 14.3. Um, it could be as high as 15 and as low as 14. Um, if it's below 14%, then you have a 1.5% leeway, but the key is you can't cross 14. So, if this label said 14, so if this label says 14.5, you can't go down to 13.5. It has to be, the lower limit is 14. We can go up to 15, you can go up to 15.5, okay? So that's how, that's how it works out, uh, but it might be truly 14.3. A lot of times with these labels, especially back labels, um, they don't worry about, worry about it so much as long as they're within that, that, that uh, leeway they have. So that they're not having to worry about the cola, their 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 um, label label um, approvals. Anyway, this has got the bell pepper now. It didn't come across in the nose as much. It came more about in the palate. But you have really it's 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 red fruit, but I feel like there's a little bit of blackberry in here. Even though it's just this carbonara, it doesn't say 100. percent They could have thrown in some cabernet sauvignon in here somewhere, but we're gonna say it's all carbonara just based upon. I know the website didn't have a lot, but based on what the website said, it's it should be 100% carbonara. Um, but yeah, it's like darker red fruit, a little spicy, bell pepper. A touch of smoke. There's a little bit of vanilla going on here. So the oak barrels, the newer oak barrels are 300 liters. That's bigger than we normally get in Bordeaux at 225 and Burgundy at 227. Whew, it's a big boy. I, this another wine, it says 14.5 on the label. The text sheet said 14.3, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's 15 or even 15.5. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's actually 15%, but yeah, it's, it's noticeable. And I, I didn't even drink it. You can, you can really, you can really feel the alcohol. It's tasty. I like the wine. The bell pepper is now gone. It's not, I don't get any pyrazines. I feel like if I was drinking this wine, I would feel like it's potentially Chilean, just not with a ton of pyrazine, but not sure if it's going to be Cabernet Sauvignon or Carmenere. Um, it could be Argentine Cabernet Sauvignon, not Malbec. I wouldn't, I wouldn't confuse Malbec. And I could also see thinking that this might be like a hot year in Bordeaux or just, you know, to me, it's, it's more, more Cabernet Sauvignon like, with a balance of fruit and earth with a little emphasis, more emphasis on the earth. So um, even though I know there's, there's high alcohol, so I might think this is somebody that just has really ripe fruit to start with, uh, fully fermented it, and but the grapes are presenting a lot of earthiness to it. So I wouldn't necessarily throw this into Chile. It could be on the list of possible places the piercing comes in and out. Like I'm getting kind of the cumin spice now. It comes in and out. So again, it's like that, like a wine we had a couple weeks ago where it's like, it kind of needs to open up. And I think this is a big, this is a big boy wine. This is a big boy wine. And, and is it 20, is it 2020 also? 2020. So, I mean, this thing, is this the one that says six to eight years of aging? Yeah. Like this, this thing can age. 
This is six to eight years. This thing could age probably 10 to 20. It's a big boy. It's young. I think, I think it's just as, it's just young. And it's, it shows young. It shows youth in that sense where it's just a big boy, juicy and, and fruit, fruity, but not fruit bomb, but complexity. And like it, 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 it feels pricey. It's 36 bucks. I can easily see this being, you know, put up against a $50, you know, Cabernet Sauvignon or a $50, you know, uh, wine. So this is a wine that I think is just, it's just too young right now um, to really show off everything. I think it, it gives little flashes of brilliance, of like what's it going to become in another five years? Um, I think that's, I think it's really kind of at the point, it's like, hey, I got a lot of potential here hang around i mean i'm not gonna wait five years to drink the rest of this but um you never know i, I waited almost a year <laughs> to, to, to do it but yeah it's um it's a big boy wine i like it i think this is a wine that has a lot of potential and i i really would like to see this wine in a few more years unfortunately i know i'm not gonna I'll, I'll probably drink this wine within the next couple months it's probably not gonna wine i'm gonna hold on to i mean like intentionally hold on to mm. See right there, a big shot of bell pepper. I'm waiting for a big shot. Like it, it was like, oh, bell pepper's here. It wasn't the singular thing. It wasn't the overriding thing. It wasn't the, the biggest thing there, but it was there. So this is where I'd be like, maybe this is Chile. And then I would have, okay, now it's a Cabernet Sauvignon or Carbonaire. Um, I, it, it's showing potential that it's going to be even better than it is now. And it's already a good wine. I'm excited to see where it comes from, where, where it goes from now. All right, so we'll do it for today's show. If you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and tell your friends. And we'll see you next time with one more Chilean Carmenere.